Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today and welcome back to Queens Park. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're meeting on the tree lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and reaffirm the Ontario Green Party's commitment to the truth and reconciliation process. Today, I'm joined by Patrick Macklem, Emeritus uh, Professor of Constitutional Law from the University of Toronto and the Ontario Greens Justice Critic. We're here today because for months now, Ontarians have been inundated with near daily findings and revelations about the Ford government's $8.3 billion Greenbelt scandal. We've had senior staff resign. We've had two cabinet ministers resign because their, of their participation in the backroom deals that led to this Greenbelt scandal. One of them even gave false information to the Integrity Commissioner. The very office meant to ensure that members of the legislature conduct themselves with integrity and respect for the people of Ontario. After months of protests and rallies, petitions, phone calls, letters, and signs, putting pressure on the Premier to do the right thing and keep his Greenbelt promise, the Premier last week finally reversed his decision to open Greenbelt lands uh, to development. But if he thinks that this half-hearted apology is the end of the story, then he's dead wrong. We can't let an 11th hour reversal become a get out of jail free card. It's clear that the trail of Greenbelt destruction leads directly to the Premier's office and his cabinet. The people of this province put trust in them and they chose deals to benefit Ford connected developers over everyday Ontarians, failing to uphold the integrity of this legislature. This scandal raises significant questions about the way we are governed in the province of Ontario, about the abuse of executive authority in the advancements of private interests by public office, about the way we hold our legislators and our executive authority to account. It's time to tackle these big questions because the people of Ontario deserve honest answers. On August 25th, I wrote the Premier asking for an independent public inquiry. To date, I have not received a response. That is why this morning, I wrote the Integrity Commissioner, David J. Wake, asking that he exercise his powers afforded to him under sections 30 and 31 of the Members' Integrity Act to trigger a public inquiry into the Greenbelt scandal. Over the past several months, we have borne witness to mo multiple contraventions of the Members' Integrity Act's provisions designed to protect the trust that legislative assembly members delegate to members of the Executive Council to exercise executive authority as the government of Ontario. Each and every member of the Premier's cabinet, either by action or inaction, is responsible for the quote, rushed, non-transparent, and almost reckless, in quote, manipulation of executive power that took place under the Premier's watch. I believe that the behavior of the cabinet threatens core objectives of the Members' Integrity Act in such a way that is clearly a matter of public interest that warrants an independent public inquiry. The breadth of past, present, and potential investigations by the RCMP, the Integrity Commissioner, the Auditor General, and the Privacy Commissioner are all key to delivering justice to Ontarians. These investigations into individual and possibly criminal misconduct are critically important. 
At the same time, there are unanswered, broader public policy, legislative integrity, and good governance questions that have significant implications on the way we are governed in the province of Ontario. The standards to which we hold our premier and cabinet to account and the way we deliver accountability when a breach of this scale takes place. An independent public inquiry is the best tool we have to deliver these answers to the people of Ontario. And I want to be clear, a public inquiry is not just about pointing fingers or laying blame. It's about looking forward. It's about learning from mistakes so that we can ensure that a breach of misconduct of this scale, a scandal of this magnitude, never happens again in the province of Ontario. It's what the people of Ontario deserve. And that's why Ontario Greens will continue to keep fighting until accountability is delivered and recommendations are presented to the members of the Legislative Assembly and the public to ensure that something like this never happens again. This time, I would like to turn the microphone over to Patrick Macklem. Welcome, Patrick. I just want to add a few comments uh, uh, to, to Mike's statement uh, and provide some detail on the reasons why a public inquiry, an independent public inquiry, is needed at this time. Whether the breach of trust that the government owes to the public um, has been violated by uh, its recent actions over the green belt. Um, whether it constitutes a failure of leadership on the part of the Premier, whether an apology, however sincere, uh, is sufficient, those are questions uh, for the public in a general election. When the breach of trust is one that the government owes a duty to the legislature and members of the Legislative Assembly, these actions are insufficient. Legislative Assembly members condition the exercise of executive power on compliance with established practices that ensure responsible government. That is because the executive has a monopoly on the public service. It has a monopoly on regulatory changes. It has a monopoly on introducing bills that involve spending, and it has the power of the purse. And these long established practices <clears throat> are designed to separate the public duties of members of the Executive Council from their and other private interests, and the other private, other interests of other private actors. These practices ensure that there are transparent lines of communication between and among ministers, the Premier's office, the office of the Cabinet Secretary, and the public service. Uh, these open lines of communication require the use of government technology, phones, lines of communication, email, uh, etc. These lines of communication are designed so that no one can cover their tracks. These long-standing practices also include oversight mechanisms that have been in place for decades in various ways, in various forms, to ensure actions and processes are designed in line with the public duties of cabinet members and that they separate out private interests. All of these guardrails, all of these practices, which parliamentarians refer to as conventions, parliamentary conventions, are critical, are key to the trust that assembly members vest in cabinet to execute the laws of Ontario. All of those guardrails have been, uh, have disappeared. 
they no longer operate. None of them were in place uh, when the rollout to develop the green belt was put into place. None of them were in place when the package arrived at cabinet. None of them were in place when cabinet deliber deliberated over uh, the proposal to both change regulations and also introduce a public uh, bill to, to introduce legislative change to enable the Green Belt to develop. <coughs> they still are no longer in place. We have no guardrails left in the exercise of executive power. And assembly members can no longer trust the executive council between now and the next election. There are three years of governance in this province uh, coming, uh, coming forward. Uh, and the executive branch of government uh, seems to be unconstrained by parliamentary convention. All of this needs to be fixed before the next general election. And the only option that's left to members of the, of the Legislative Assembly is an independent public inquiry. Uh, many requests have been put by the Green Party and other opposition uh, parties to the Premier to launch an independent investigation. All of these requests have been rebuffed. There is no other option available to Legislative Assembly members than to request that Commissioner Wake uh, call an independent public inquiry. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to Patrick and all the constitutional scholars and lawyers who uh, helped us in drafting this request and uh, framing the necessity of why the people of Ontario and the members of this legislative assembly um, need an independent public inquiry to answer the questions that have arisen out of this Greenbelt scandal and to put forward recommendations to ensure that something like this never happens again.